This is Paul Staff, and you are watching Brutally Delicious with Bruce Moore. Hey everyone, you're watching Brutally Delicious, I'm Bruce Moore. Today we've got a great show in store for you. We're going to go live via remote to Portland, Oregon on Tuesday with Tony from the Hardcore Act American Meat. And if you're ready, we'll go ahead and get started. Hey, what's up? I'm Tony from the band American Meat from Portland, Oregon. I'm here to answer some questions and then show you a step-by-step -step, uh, dish that I like to make. So here we go. Now that your new Disc 3 has been released, how do you feel about it, and are you satisfied with the outcome? I'm absolutely satisfied with the outcome. The outcome came out a lot better than expected, and I'm very fortunate to be able to put out a third album and get it out there to our fans. Very excited for it. What can hardcore fans expect when they pick up a copy of 3? Hardcore fans can expect from this album um, a lot more organic, raw, emotionally, passionately angry album than before. Uh, kind of almost in comparison to our first album, Heat, uh, that came out back in 2008. Um, but yeah, that's what we were trying to go for. Uh, and to achieve that, we had to dig deep and just put it out there and give it 110% in the recording and making sure that this album was as heavy as possible. So, it was a good deal. What's your writing process like? Do you guys all write together, or is it more the efforts of one particular member of the band? Um, as a vocalist, um, our writing process consists of our two guitar players, Brian Cam and our drummer Duncan, uh, getting together and piecing the music together, just the music, and then once that is completed um, with the structured songs. They'll bring a recording of those songs over to me, and then I will review it, um, start coming up and writing stuff for the songs. Um, that's pretty much it. It's kind of just a pretty basic recipe on how to put a song together. As long as there's music, uh, I can come up with pretty much anything. So it's a, it's a good structured way to piece together an album and have a big flow, so. Where do you draw your inspiration from and what subjects do you tackle in your lyrics? I tackle inspiration from all different perspectives of life and I pretty much just take what I experience, what I witness, um, my perspective on certain subjects that are going on in the world or things that are happening around me or personally. Um, take those as inspiration and just channel it into my lyrical content. And then I just apply those um, lyrics to the music that they give me to write to. And it's a pretty good formula. So. Um, that's it. How does it make you feel when the energy you envision in studio when you're recording comes to life in front of a live crowd? I feel that the crowd reacts to the new stuff um, in a more, what I mean, a mosh more. It translates to that. They're more, ex they're really excited about the music. So I see a lot of people moshing more to the music because they're really excited to hear new stuff. Um, so that translates to it being a good thing that bass, the energy is live and rambunctious. So when the crowd goes crazy, we go crazy, and uh, we just feed off that. It's, it's a great thing. 
What is the strangest thing you've ever had happen to you on tour? I would say one of the strangest things probably would be the miscommunication between two bands in which we left our guitar player in Louisiana one day when I rode with another band and then my band thought that our guitar player who was in this person's apartment that we were staying with the night before was riding with us and then we all end up leaving and then one of us thought like hey has anyone seen Brian or heard of him and then we all assumed that he was with the other band and uh, the helium was getting left behind so our band in which I wasn't in the band drove like a few hours back or whatever it was to go pick him up so I would say that's so much strange but it's pretty funny that the miscommunication was there and we left someone behind and overall it was a good time though. <laughs> when you have some free time and you're not touring or recording what do you like to do? Um, on my free time, when I'm not touring, um, I'm a bouncer at a nightclub. Um, I like to train uh, mixed martial arts, uh, jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai and boxing. Uh, it keeps me busy, it keeps me fit, um, clears my mind, it's really fun. Uh, I have three guinea pigs that I like to take care of and they're little brats sometimes, but <laughs> they're my game pace. That's pretty much it. It's pretty basic. What is the toughest lesson you've ever learned in the studio or on stage? Uh, one of my toughest lessons probably learned uh, from being in the studio and on the stage is uh, my is learning how to control how to control my breathing. Um, that implies to being in the studio and on stage because when you're screaming as I am, it takes a lot out of you and you run out of breath really quick if you can't control your breathing and be semi-conscious of what you're doing. So it takes a long time and it's not that easy. I know you guys are heading over to Europe here, but do you have any other touring plans in support of the record? Yeah, we're actually going to Europe here September 5th for a whole month. Uh, we're touring tons of countries. I can't even name them all. I know we're going to the UK, Germany, uh, Sweden, um, Belgium, Austria, Italy. I'm pretty stoked to like go to these places I've never been to. Um, it's going to be good for the band. What would fans be surprised to find on your iPod? Uh, if a fan went to my iPod, you'd probably be seeing a lot of trap, crunk, rap music. I like to listen to a lot of rap and hip hop. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like Waka Flocka, Cashin' Out, Young Easy. Uh, it's fun. It's fun to work out too. So, and I work at a nightclub too, so it's being played all the time. If you had not become a musician, what other career path would you like to attempt? If I wasn't in a 20 band, I would ch probably channel all of my energy into being a professional mixed martial artist. I like to train and I like to be health conscientious. And I also like to cook too. I kind of thought about being a chef, but I'm not quite there yet. I think I have a quite a number of years to perfect some things, um, but I like to do it as a hobby. Um, cool to turn it into a profession, but we'll see. Do you have any formal culinary training? I don't have any culinary training, but I have years of watching my dad and my mom cook different types of Peruvian food, in which that's my ethnicity, and it's just all eyes on, just watching, observing ever since a little kid. Um, this one dish I'm about to show you guys is something that I've acquired over the years of watching my dad and my mom cook. So, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much the same thing as, I guess, going to school uh, and watching my parents. I mean, 
I know a lot of things I need to use to cook certain things. I mean, things that I care about learning and knowing about applies to my cooking that I wouldn't be able to get out of a culinary school. So. Do you consider yourself a foodie of sorts? I'm a total foodie. I love eating all different types of food and trying new things, cooking new things. Even if it's bad, at least I'll learn from it if it doesn't turn out as good as I want to. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think my whole band's a foodie because they love to eat all the time. We and do. And I know it's burning a hole through their pocket because eating out all the time is expensive. But in Portland, where we live, there's lots of places to eat. So it's just the benefit of living in a very culturally diverse city where we could have the opportunity to and the privilege to try different restaurants and, and enjoy it. What's next for American Me? Well, after we get back from Europe, uh, we're just going to be gathering ourselves for uh, for a minute because it's going to be our first time over in Europe. So we're just going to hang out for a few and then pretty much just see what gets offered out to us. Um, any other tours? Um, trying to go back to Japan at some point and maybe hit up some other countries like Australia, China, uh, South America. So a lot of different options of uh, being in a band it has three albums. You get to have the benefit of going to different places and the opportunity to be invited to go to these different places. So it's really exciting. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a Peruvian style red roast. So here are my ingredients. We are going to be using these vegetables, potatoes, onions, squash, carrots, cilantro. So this is the basic ingredients. So I'm going to start off getting my vegetables ready. So I can What I'm using here is a Yukon Gold potato, and what I like about this one is that um, it, it's a very hearty potato, so it, when you cook it in a crock pot, it cooks, it cooks pretty easy for the most part, where you don't have to keep, where you don't have to worry about it being really hard, so not like a, these other potatoes, um, like a regular steamed brown one where it might take a long time for it to cook through. So, and for the onions, onions I actually use to cook first. And part of this process of getting this dish ready. So, I use it to kind of like saute and get the flavor rolling. Alright, so we got our vegetables cut. We're going to set these aside for right now. So the next step into preparing the Peruvian red roast is to getting the onions, getting them in the crock pot. This is really important so it kind of sets off a new taste. And you're gonna get some cumin, brown cumin, just right here. It's just good. I would probably eye maybe about a tablespoon maybe. Give or take, maybe a tablespoon and a half. You can never really go wrong with the spice. So a little bit more boom. There it is. Alright. I'm gonna throw some. Throw in some 
garlic pepper and some salt. I just kind of throw in a dash. And then you're going to take some cilantro. This is very important for it gives off that very strong, distinct cilantro smell and aroma. Um, it's very important into uh, this dish. Setting out the aroma, that's what gets people excited. And so. Now. Probably maybe like a tablespoon or more of this. Last but not least, our garlic cloves. I like to just I like to just dabble this up. Alright, and so, you put the top on this, you let that roll for a minute. Alright, the next step into this dish is to cut the chuck roast. This is approximately four pounds of chuck roast, and um, I don't think I'm going to use all four pounds, but it's a, it's a good quality meat for what this dish is, consists of. Um, I wouldn't use anything else beside chuck roast because for the way it's cooked in the crock pot, it just dissolves, literally just falls apart after a certain amount of time having it cooked. So I'm just going to finish up cutting here. I usually like to leave some fat on for fat and gives flavor. So um, try to leave some on, um, but most of it you can just take off, but you definitely want to leave some on there. It's just going to burn off anyways, and melt off when it's been cooked. So these slices might be a little thick. Um, but other than that though, it should be okay. So with that, I got my, my pan warming up to about a medium high. And I'm going to take this piece of meat, let's throw them on here. So I'm not going to cook them all the way, I'm just going to sear them. And it is important that you sear them because if you don't sear them, it's just going to take a super long time to cook and it just doesn't cook the same way. The next step uh, is to throw in the meat and the vegetables. So as you can see, what's going on here is that the crock pot is putting all these flavors together, congealing it, making it into one, and the aroma, if you could smell this, is just really strong and it smells super good. So. This is the foundation of the stew and what creates the very powerful, potent flavor. So, I'm going to go ahead and get the meat in. As you can see, I seared the meat. I didn't cook it all the way, I just seared it. So, I actually seared it.
now we're going to go ahead and throw in the tomato sauce. This is what's going to be the stew like. Um, the tomato paste is added as well. And this is to make the stew not so watery, so it keeps it semi-consistent. So, throw that in there. Ragu has different flavors in it, like basil, uh, other ingredients um, that I didn't put in here, so it's kind of a little substitute. I don't add too much though. And it also it's a little bit sweet, and it gives the rest of you a little, little sweet taste. But to make the uh, icing on the cake and the ketchup is what sets it off. Ketchup is sweet, so this is what's going to really emphasize that um, from using the ragu. Alright, now it is time to add in the vegetables. Initially, that just uses us to saute the onions and garlic just a little bit. So, I got this recipe from my dad, who has been making this all throughout my life. It's one of my favorite dishes, and he's been making it, or he learned it from his dad, and has been making it for a bunch of years. So, it's one of those things when you're like gone on the road for a long period of time and then you can like come home to a home cooked meal. It's like one of those dishes that is prepared when I get back from those long trips. You know, it's just one of my favorites. I personally think my version of the proven style red roast is a lot better than his. This is uh, my opinion because that's just how I am. And you will see here in a few moments the final product. So the next step would be to cook the rice. So I'm pretty sure you know how to cook rice. And I use a rice cooker. A rice cooker is very efficient and timely mannered. So the rice, I like to use jasmine rice. Jasmine rice, um, it cooks nicely. It's nice and soft and fluffy. Um, and I also like to throw in the garlic clove. Nice little garlic flavor with the rice. So, Alright guys, this is the final product of the Peruvian style red roast. And this right here is something super delicious. I really hope that you take my recipe and try it at home. And enjoy what I truly enjoy. So, with that being said, we have a new album that just came out on Tuesday. Title three. Pick it up in stores everywhere. Rise Records. And we'll be hitting the road semi soon after we get back from Europe. So thank you for joining me in uh, my presentation on making one of my favorite dishes. And thank you to everyone who cared to watch. Till next time.